Welcome back uh, YouTube viewers. Uh, I finally finished uh, the aquarium. Um, I'm really quite happy with it. I'll pan in in a moment. Um, so it really uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, of course I finished all of the uh, uh, the busy work as far as planning it and, and setting up the plumbing equipment and so forth. Uh, a few details on the tank. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, I used uh, a combination of substrates. I used um, fluorite, Seachem's fluorite, as the base layer. That was mixed with uh, ADA soil. Um, and then in the front portion of the tank, there I used uh, Amazonia powder, which is also an ADA product, um, to plant the uh, hair grass. So there was a combination of substrates in here, and I went into a little uh, bit of detail about why I use uh, this combination in a previous video when I was setting up the tank. I've also added a atomic uh, CO2 diffuser uh, with pressurized CO2 uh, at about three bubbles per second. It, that's what it's running currently. It's currently off because of course this is the shutdown part of the tank. Uh, so the uh, Amazon sword has settled in nicely um, and the other thing that I've added, I'll zoom in so you can see it, I've got a little better handle with this camera as well. I've added uh, some microsorum, uh, the narrow leaf microsorum, or java fern. Uh, I added it to the driftwood. Um, and let's see, from the last video, I think that's about the only thing I've added. I've added and planted a few more crypts, uh, as well as, uh, I think I planted about four more of the hair grass uh, in the aquarium, four more plugs of the hair grass in the aquarium. As you can see, there's quite a bit of current uh, blowing around the hair grass, uh, also around the java fern and this side of the aquarium. I'm getting a little build up of debris. The one thing with hair grass when you plant it, you got to make sure that it does not become infused with a lot of debris because uh, ADA soil, especially the powder ADA, is really uh, it, dirty. I don't know how else to say it because it, there's a lot of fine uh, granules that are spread around when you add it to the aquarium if you do it after the aquarium is already set up. Um, in this case I almost had to do it because of the way I was setting up the aquarium but normally I don't do that because the powdery residue becomes a uh, breeding ground for algae because I mean it's a fertile substrate so naturally uh, algae is, is uh, very prone to growing those granules. So what I have to do initially is watch the hair grass very carefully and uh, as you can tell I've got the uh, outflow from the filter blowing towards the front of the tank which pushes it down towards the uh, substrate so that'll help some but um, I'll, I'm still gonna have to stay on top of it. Some of the plants are doing pretty well and are responding very well the Amazon sword, as I pointed out, was uh, a rescue from the pet shop. Sorry about that. And, uh, you know, but it is wakening up. Uh, I must admit, I wouldn't have done that ordinarily. But, um, you know, it, it, it was a plant that needed rescue. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, uh, necrosis. And so I'm going to have to be careful with this. And if you see there, there's some... Uh, algae, that's the powdery residue I was referring to now. I'm not going to be too concerned about the leaves on the sward now, but uh, the new leaves I'm going to pay a particular attention to. And if I don't disturb the tank, this won't be a problem going forward, but I fully expect to lose a lot of these leaves um, and you know, hopefully that will happen within the next month or so and then it will start growing out, and I'm sure it will. It will start growing out new leaves. 
uh, the Biloxia came out pretty good. It didn't, uh, there was a little, there was going to be some dieback on it, and that's to be expected if it was planted in the best of conditions. Excuse me. The Crips are, that's a better shot of the uh, Tonic Diffuser. The Crips are doing very well, uh, as you can tell. Um, since I didn't add any um, uh, uh, 88 powder to the rear of the aquarium, this part of the aquarium came out pretty good in terms of no uh, buildup or residue, but near the front there is quite a bit, so I'm going to have to be on top of that. Um, the narrow leaf uh, valicinaria um, was in bad shape when I planted it, so uh, it was in a tank that I had neglected, and as you can tell, there's a lot of uh, oh, residue and algae on the leaves, which this plant, once established, it grows really well. It's called eelgrass, and it grow, it'll probably grow to the top of this tank, as some strands, as you can tell. Uh, but the leaves remain very narrow. It'll give a very good effect in this part of the tank, I believe, because what will happen is the, uh, the eelgrass sort of, uh, you know, waves in the whatever the direction of the water current uh, is, and it'll, it'll spread itself across that part, you know, the back part of the tank, depending on the flow. So I actually wanted that effect in this section of the tank, and I think it'll be a nice one. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. The Valicinaria spiralis here grows very thickly. It's in the back of the driftwood. It's rather hard to see. Zoom in a little more. But there's uh, one of the shoots. Now it spreads across the entire rear quarter, rear, well, almost a uh, third of the tank. It spreads all the way across the back. And I was growing this in a tank, and actually, I only started with two small shoots that were included with some plants from a, uh, some that I purchased from, a, and he either included them purposefully or they were accidentally in there and uh, I've grown in the other aquarium that they were in I mean they covered one entire side of the tank so the plant uh, grows very quickly and very well very uh, thickly and the effect will be these little spiral leaves in the back part of the tank um, the let's see the microsorum species here of course, is a narrow leaf uh, java fern. And again, these were grown in pretty sterile conditions. I normally grow these in a tank uh, with my Achilles. There's one leaf up there with a little debris on it that I'm going to have to clean off. But uh, other than that, this plant was in a pretty clean environment. I think it was in a tank with uh, some Nothobranchias that I had. So. It was in a pretty clean tank, so you can tell it's a pretty clean plant. I, I was hesitant about putting it here because it does get a lot of light, but uh, I'm going to have to watch the photo period, especially initially, uh, uh, especially on this plant. I may have to add some floating plants to the tank. I'm just not really sure. But uh, they don't like a lot of light. They uh, And the reason I put it in that position, it gets a lot of morning light because there is a window there. So it'll get a lot of morning light which it prefers and grows very well under that type of lighting. The Hygrophilia penitifata uh, grows anywhere. I mean I had it in a tank that was just really overgrown. You notice I stuck a piece in the driftwood. Uh, as I was saying in an earlier video, the um, Hygrophilia pinnatifida has a tendency to um, grow on the wood or, or over top of soil. It's, it's really a very versatile plant, and I hope you'll be able to see that once this aquarium matures. But uh, I expect it to grow in the driftwood and so forth and uh, make a very nice effect. Uh, here are the other crypts. As you can tell, they got a lot of debris on them, so I'm going to have to watch those leaves. Normally, what I do with uh, in this situation is I simply wait for the new leaves to grow out and uh, clip the old ones. So 
again, the driftwood needs a little bit more uh, cleaning up. Uh, but as you can tell, let me zoom in. As you can tell, the um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, it still needs just a little bit more cleaning, and then uh, I'll be able to, uh, you know, it'll be in better shape. So. I just want to give you guys a brief update of the aquarium um, and the only thing I'm really going to add to the tank is a little bit more I've got some Anubias I'm going to add right there in the center I've got several uh, varieties of moss I want to tie to the driftwood some parts of the driftwood but the problem is that I'm not sure which one I recently got some Taiwan moss and I'm not sure how to grow that um, and I'm not sure the growth pattern of the moss I've seen it in different aquariums but uh, I'm not really sure how that would work out uh, tied to driftwood I don't I'm gonna have to check and see if I can find that in a video where it is tied to driftwood but I think I'm gonna use uh, uh, Java moss uh, because I know how it grows I know the type of lighting it, it, it needs and so forth so I think I'm gonna go with Java moss and I'm gonna do that one day once I do a 50% water change I'm gonna start tying it to the upper uh, uh, pieces of driftwood and then uh, maybe a spot or two on the bottom piece of driftwood but uh, I'm definitely gonna use the Java moss in this tank so those will be updates that I'll give you in the future and once again thanks for going through this ordeal with me uh, I think I'm gonna really enjoy this tank and uh, I hope you guys follow along to uh, see how it develops but once again I want to thank uh, the new subscribers and for those who continue to watch my channel uh, I'm not an expert, I've just been doing this a while and planted tanks are something I've really got into in the last couple of years and um, I'm really enjoying it, I'm really enjoying watching a lot of you guys videos I really watch, <laughs> there's a couple of you guys that are really hysterical but uh, most of the time I do enjoy the videos and uh, I'm not so arrogant to think that uh, I can never learn anything and I believe me, I've learned a lot from watching you guys videos I mean, as far as updating some of the information, some things I had forgot, <laughs> and uh, you all brought them to memory. Uh, it's kind of funny how the aquarium hobby goes in circles. You know, back in uh, when I was a junior member of the Louisville Tropical Fish Fancers, you know, we used to keep growing an Amazon sword was probably one of the biggest achievements. You know, that was before the days of CO2. And what we would do, we would pot the Amazon sword in a clay pot. You put gravel at the bottom, uh, larger pebbles, and then you'd put um, uh, gravel on top of that. You'd put dirt in between there, and then you'd put you plant the sword plant in the dirt. Then you'd put the gravel back, and then you'd pull the sword plant up to the crown of the root and let it grow. The bigger the pot, the bigger the Amazon sword got. You know, and a lot of guys had all different formulas, but that was the the, the extent of growing uh, plants uh, when I was a junior member. Now the hobby has developed so that, uh, you know, you have uh, all, if we had had this stuff back in the 70s, I tell you, you know, no, no telling where we'd be in the hobby right now. But once again, I, I digress, but uh, I enjoy you guys watching my uh, uh, videos and I enjoy the comments, so look forward to an update on this tank in about a month. But thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you guys soon.